everyone, it's Rebecca from The Glitch Stitchery. Um, today I wanted to come and talk more about the sunflower motif I had in one of my recent sips and stitches because as I was working on it I kept thinking of all these ideas of more things to do with it and the more I thought about it the more I was like well I could do this and I could do that but rather than just continue making that video longer because it was already fairly long for me I thought I would just split it in two so triangle shawl in one other uses for the motif in a separate video so that's what this is so I've made a few of them ahead of time and we're just going to talk through two options the first will be how to turn it into a hat instead of a scarf so that involves continuing to work it in the round until it gets to a certain size and then turning it into a hat the other one will be how to turn the motif into a square so you can use it as a granny square and I specifically wanted to do this version for you because I have a few patterns, not patterns exactly, more like tutorials coming up over the next couple months on how to use granny squares as the basis for making some sweaters. Uh, one of them is going to be a pullover and one is going to be a cardigan. So if you already have a way to know how to make a really cool granny square to use as like the design center of your sweater then that would be cool or you could just use it as a granny square for blankets it doesn't really matter so as with the sunflower shawl from the original video you can use whatever yarn you want for this i'm opting for worsted weight scraps but you could go with a finer weight yarn if you wanted and just keep in mind that it'll end up being lacier you can also change the hook size i'm using a j hook uh, if you wanted to use a smaller hook it'll work up smaller Maybe you want to make something for a young child, or maybe you just want a lacier piece in general, and that's fine too. Um, all of the written pattern links will be in the description below. I have them typed up on my blog. So I'm going to get the camera hooked up above my workspace so that you can see what I'm doing, and let's talk through it. Alright, so before I even started making this as a triangular shawl, my first renditions were hats. So if you turn it flat, the sunflower is the top of the hat and it's a slouchy hat. So basically how this works is that when you make the sunflower, I'm gonna use this one because I already started doing the, the part that I'm talking about. So we just move this stuff out of the way. When you make the sunflower motif, motif according to my tutorial, after you do the two rows of petals and you start on the leaf parts that work kind of like a granny square style stitch so it's four and then chain one then the next row you work four and chain one into each chain space and so on and so forth what you do is you keep working rows like that until it gets to be uh, i think i went about 12 inches in diameter now at that point the next row is just the double crochet without any chain spaces and then you start doing decreases but not very many just until it's you know hat size and after that you just work some ribbing and you're done it's very very simple and I usually alternate yarns every row so I'll have two yarns going that means there is a right side and a wrong side I haven't sewn these in yet but as you can see on the inside it's a lot messier and you can see the yarns as they travel up through the color changes so yeah, there is going to be a right side and a wrong side doing it this way. And actually, if you wanted to, you could also keep going and make it into a market bag this way. If you really wanted to. <laughs> um, but today we're making a hat. So I have this and we're going to use this and I think this scrap here. And that should be enough to make it a hat. So I'm going to change it the camera around and go into time lapse for a little bit so one moment Thank you. 
All right, so depending on the yarns you used, it'll take four or five rows of the granny square style circle in order to get to the point where you're gonna start turning it into a hat. So for my original sample, it took five rows. This one only took four and it's already exactly 12 inches in diameter, which is about as far as I wanna go because it's really big and floppy. And um, because it has such good drape, it is gonna be a very slouchy hat, which is what I personally like. But if you want less drape, you can use a less drapey yarn and a smaller hook to tighten up the stitches and make it more stiff. It'll just take longer to make it a hat that way because it will work up smaller. All right, so the next row is just going to be four double crochet in each of these chain spaces. There is no chain in between the four double crochet. It's just four double crochet the whole way around. And then the row after that is a decrease row. So it's going to be two double crochet and then double crochet two double crochets together. So it en ends up uh, divide, how do I explain that? <laughs> Bad at math. Okay, it ends up lowering the total number of stitches by 25%. So I'm gonna work those two rows and then I'll show you where that brings us on this hat. So I actually did a second row of decreases using the same two double crochet and then double crochet two together just because it was a little too large and I didn't think it would actually fit a human head. Um, it's going to depend entirely on what yarns you used, what gauge you ended up with. I didn't have to do that with this one, so it just happened with this one. It's possible that the sunflower was larger for this one too. Um, because I was playing around with some larger versions when I was making these swatches. I might have grabbed the wrong one. Anyway, the next part would be the ribbing. So that would be two front post double crochet, two back post double crochet, all the way around. Um, for this one, I did four rows of ribbing. It's really a personal preference thing. Kind of like how if you want a smaller or larger hat. You can do more or less decre decrease rows. If you want a wider hat to begin with, you can do more of the granny square style rows. It's really up to you, um, up to you about what yarn you want to use. It really doesn't matter. This is more of like a recipe than a tutorial or tutorial rather than a pattern. So just do what you have on hand. The hat itself is works up very fast. I think maybe two hours tops for me. Um, depending on how fast you are as a crocheter, it might take a little longer or a little less. I'm gonna do the ribbing, finish the hat off, and then we will talk about how to turn this one into a granny square. All right, so when you're using a circular motif and you're turning it into a square, it usually takes a few rows to start getting the square shape. So the first row is basically set up so that the rows after that will work up properly as a granny square. So I've already started. But basically when you first make the sunflower motif, according to my original video, you'll end up with 24 of these chain four loops. And that's what we're gonna be using to create this. So in the first two of them, I double crocheted three into one of them, chained two, double crocheted three into the next, next one. This is going to create our corner when we go around the next time. Then chain one, four half double crochet, chain one, four single crochet, chain one, four single crochet, chain one, four half double crochet, chain one. So then we're going to be doing the next corner again but it's not gonna look like a corner until we are done with the first row and we move on to the second row. Um, so I'm going to try to demonstrate that so you see what it looks like. So three double crochet 
in this chain space. Chain two, and that's where the next corner will go in the next row. Three double crochet into the next chain space. Chain one, four half double crochet. Chain one, four single crochet. Chain one, four single crochet. Chain one, four half double crochet. Chain one, and then you'll do another one of those corners in this part. So we work like that the whole way around, and then we're going to come back for the next row. All right, so it doesn't quite look like a square yet. We got the first prep row done so that we can go and start working like a normal granny square and basically from this point on you that's what you're going to do so i'm going to chain over i mean not chain slip over to the chain space and this is a corner chain space and i can tell because there's the three and then the chain two in between so we're going to work this like a corner we're going to double crochet three I'm trying to go quick for y'all. Chain two, double crochet three, all within that same chain space. And that's gonna be your corner every round. That's where your corner's gonna end up. Then you're gonna chain one, and here's the chain space for the next part. Three, no, four double crochet right there. chain one and that's how you're gonna work it four double crochet chain one in each of the normal chain spaces and then in your corner chain space it's gonna be three double crochet chain two three double crochet chain one so I'm gonna put in time-lapse and then I'll show you what that looks like All right, so as you can see after the second row, it is pretty much squared off and the more rows you do like this, the more square it will be instead of being more rounded from the sunflower. And you can use it like you would any other granny square. You can use it for granny square quilts. Um, as I said, I'm gonna have a few tutorials coming up in the future on making granny square based sweaters. So one will be a pullover and one will be a cardigan. And they both will have portions where you can choose to use a patterned granny square if you wish so you could use this for that uh, I don't know it's pretty cool I like using it and of course you can switch colors as often as you want so that finishes off this video and I'm going to just finish weaving in the end so I can take some final photographs for all of you but I hope it was helpful and as I mentioned before all of the written pattern links are in the description below um, I'll see you next time.
If you like my work and would like to see more, please follow the links in the description below to my Instagram and blog, or show your support by buying me a coffee. Most of all, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.